This is a book that uh, I stole. <laughs> Hey nerds, it's Michaela back again with another video and it is summertime, which as somebody who lives in Florida is actually just the absolute bane of my existence. I hate the summer so much. I hate the heat. I am from New York. I do not like feeling sweaty. I do not like feeling hot or that like I can I can feel the air on me. I hate it. I hate it a lot. It's particularly bad in Florida because it's not just the heat. It's also the absolute unbearable humidity. I should not be able to walk outside and like chew the air. It's terrible. I hate the summer. But summer it is. And so to offer myself and you, if you are interested, a little summer treat, I am going to be doing today the quintessential summer book tag. This is a book tag that I just found while googling on a book blog called ZZ with Books. I will link that tag down below if you want to check them out. I think they're a really cool blog, so you should definitely uh, see them, see their other tags, etc. So this tag is comprised of 10 summer related things or activities, and then each of these things or activities corresponds with a book prompt, as in like I will be talking about a book based on these things. It's a book tag. I'm sure I'm not like blowing your mind here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. And the very first book is, I have them written down in this paper, Iced Drink. That's the first prompt. So the recommendation is for a refreshing book. And the book I am going to recommend is one that I have talked about a couple times on my channel now, and that is An Irish Country Doctor by Patrick Taylor. I will put the cover here. I have now read two books from the Irish Country Doctor series by Patrick Taylor. Um, I rent them from my library because there's a bunch. These books are extremely refreshing because they're just so like heartwarming and quaint and simple, but not simple as in like you're turning your brain off while you read them. They're just like, they're not stressful. They very much feel like something you would have either like a cold drink in the summer or a you know, piping mug of tea or hot cocoa in the winter. I will say they do give me more of like, like spring vibe, you know, more in that realm than necessarily a summer vibe. Um, but I think that's just because they are set in Northern Ireland and I always get more like latter half of the year. So like fall, winter, maybe into spring. That's why I associate with like the UK then summertime. Yeah. If you are looking for like a quiet, easy, just feel good, summer read you cannot go wrong with the series that is just about a small little cottage town in northern ireland set in the 60s and it follows you know the two uh town doctors who who live there and all of the crazy lovely silly characters uh who who make up the town's little population next up we have cotton candy a book that was fluffy and sweet and i have to have to go with the Check Please Duology by Ngozi Ukazu. These books are everything. Could not be fluffier or sweeter. I have also talked about these on my channel before. Um, these are graphic novels that are, you know, published versions of a webcomic that ran for several years. I remember reading them, not in their entirety, but like almost in their entirety when they were being published, I want to say on Tumblr. And I am so happy to now have them in book form. I mean, it just, look at this face. Look at Eric Biddle's face. I love him so much. But it's just their sweet little love story and like bromance story. It's about this hockey team at this college and all these boys just loving each other and being supportive of each other and cheering each other on in their highs and their lows. And it's all about just friendship and love and being gay. And it's so great. I love both of these books so much. So next up, the prompt is Sunglasses, a dark book. And I am assuming this is dark book as in like, thematically dark not like literally dark but i am recommending blood countess by lana popovich this is a book that i actually have a dedicated review for it's one of the very first videos i posted i have not rewatched it in a very long time so it's probably not good but this is sort of like a novelized historical telling of the story of elizabeth of bathory the like lady who allegedly bathed in the blood of virgins to say young forever um it is very dark it features you know some murder, some gore, some really just toxic codependent relationships. Definitely a read that unlike An Irish Country Doctor, which makes you feel very good about yourself in the world, um, this one definitely makes you feel like you need to take a shower afterwards because it is it is gross and grimy and just makes you not want to trust people. But if you want to know more about it, I will link up in the cards and down below 
my dedicated review. And this is very early on in the channel, so probably not great. I definitely go into more detail and I really did enjoy this book. I do recommend it if you're looking for something uh, dark to spooky up your summer nights. Next up on our list is A Picnic for a Rainy Day, which is uh, the prompt for a sad book. And I'm going to have to go with Sadie by Courtney Summers, which I will link here. I don't have it. I borrowed it from a friend. I actually another thing about it. I think I also have a dedicated review for this on my channel. I'm not entirely sure. If I did, this would also be a very early one. Um, and I will link it again up above and below if I have it. This is a sad book because it is about a girl. I can't remember if the main character's name is Sadie or if Sadie is the main character's sister. Been a long time since I read it. But it is about the, this teenage girl whose younger sister either was murdered or disappeared. Again, details are hazy haven't read it in a while i think she i think she was murdered because it's about her sort of setting out she believes she knows who killed her sister and so she is setting out to go confront this person and the story is told from two points of view it's told from the main character i'm assuming the main character's name is sadie i shouldn't assume that i don't actually know it's told from the main character's point of view as she is doing this and then it is also told from a podcaster's point of view and this podcaster sort of like following her trail trying to figure out like what happened why is she doing this because the main character did not tell anybody what she was doing she just like disappeared one day and so this podcast is trying to find her and is sort of uncovering what she's doing and her motivations and stuff and it is very sad it's about loss it's about pain it's about abuse it's about family it made me feel just like very like gutted and hollow inside so if you are looking for a sad book you can't go wrong Next up we have Sand, which is a book that irritated you. And if you are one of the many people who uh, found me and my channel because of this particular review that I posted, it should not surprise you that I am picking Leave the World Behind by Ramon Alam. This book irritated me to no end. I have an extremely long video. I mean, it's not extremely long, but I have a fairly long video on my channel discussing all of the reasons why this book irritated the hell out of me. Um, I think it is not good. I think all of the characters are extremely annoying. I think the writing is wildly irritating. The plot is extremely irritating because there is no plot. Nothing happens in this entire, entire book and um, it was such a waste of my time. So I don't recommend this uh, because uh, it's bad. I will again link this review because <laughs> I get very heated. I get very heated because I don't like it. The next item on the list is Summer Blockbuster which is your favorite or my favorite book to movie adaptation and I picked for this one The Wizard of Oz. I like probably a lot of you watched The Wizard of Oz for the first time when I was very young and I liked it you know it wasn't my favorite movie of all time no but I enjoyed it. I was one of those things like whenever it came on I think it was one of those movies that came on a lot like Halloween time you know on various like TCM or whatever but I, it, I would watch it. I thought it was a great movie. I remember my mom hates that movie because when she was a kid she was very afraid of the flying monkeys so I always felt like very brave because they didn't scare me. So I watched the movie before I read the book so maybe I am cheating with the answer to this question but I remember for one of my classes and something tells me it wasn't an English class but for one of my classes in high school for summer reading I had to read like from a list of books and I picked The Wizard of Oz because I liked the movie and I figured like this will be great and so I read The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum and I hated it. <laughs> super boring. I did not think it made sense. No, maybe I would feel differently if I read it today. I don't know. But um, yeah, I did not enjoy myself. I did not have a good time. So I would definitely say that this is one of those uh, situations where the film adaptation surpasses the original source material. And next up, we have Dropped Ice Cream, a book you were anticipating that wasn't too good. And I, um, now that I'm actually like sitting down and thinking about this, I did not mean to pick books for this list that I have dedicated reviews for already, but I have another one, and that is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by J.K. Rowling and John Tiffany and Jack Thorne. I did a read with me for this book, reading it for the first time five years after it came out, um, that I did sometime in the recent memory. But of course I was anticipating this book. I had known people who had seen this play live um, and I had heard great things. I was so stoked to be able to read it because I knew that there was an extremely low chance that I would ever be able to see it with my own two eyes. And then I read it um, and I wanted to just like silently get up, get in my car, drive to the ocean, get out of my car, walk into the ocean, and never be heard from again. This book is terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. The writing is bad. The characterization is bad. The plot is bad. The lore, the way the lore has been manipulated from the original text, bad. Bad all around. It is not a good book. It was an extreme disappointment. This was actually because of like when this came out. This was like sort of the first real thing where I started to question like JK Rowling and um, here we are many years later and there was an instinct that I definitely should have and I'm glad that I did follow. But yeah, this book was such a disappointment. 
it sucks. Next up we have Palm Tree, which is a tall book that you loved. And I am again assuming we're talking like literally the book is tall. I have a confession to make about this book. I borrowed this book from a friend because we were in the same grad program together and this was um, required reading for one of the classes in this grad program. This person took the class before me, so she let me borrow it and then I never gave it back and I don't believe she lives in the state anymore. So this is a book that uh, I stole. <laughs> this is a book that uh, I should not have, but I do. And it is technically tall. It might even be the tallest book that I own Sasha has stolen. That book is Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. Uh, if you are at all interested in drawing comics, reading comics, or just understanding comics as an art form, highly recommend this. It is a textbook essentially, but it is done in comic book format. This was the sort of required reading for a graphic novels course I took in grad school. And I was at the time like just starting to dip my toe into the world of graphic novels. I now read graphic novels almost every single day. I love graphic novels. I really recommend this. The language is super accessible. And what I found really attractive about this book was how tangible Scott McCloud's passion for comics, both the art and the consumption of them, how, how passionate he was about this art form, how much he loved it. So if you, are, if you are looking just to sort of figure out if this is something that you maybe want to like invest your time in, I recommend picking this up from your library or stealing it from a friend because it's a great book, super quick read. I mean, I probably read this in a day and I just think it'll give you a really wonderful appreciation for this art form that you may or may not have considered before. Next up we have Bonfire, which is a book that I would like to burn. And uh yeah. I'm just gonna say that The Cruel Prince by Holly Black is an insult to the trees that had to die for it and let's move on. The last item on our summer list is Fireworks and the prompt for Fireworks is a book that exploded onto the scene. I listened to a lot of social justice and racial justice podcasts so I first heard of this book right when it came out but this is one of the books that I think got recommended and shared a lot during the BLM movement from like from when that started but in particularly when things picked up in the summer of 2020 after George Floyd was murdered. So um, I am recommending White Rage by Carol Anderson. I did read this book last year and it's explosion onto the scene as an excellent resource for people, white people, but anybody in general, trying to learn more about the history and patterns of white supremacy in the United States and how that history and those patterns have shaped the world we live in today. I think this gives a very explicit and detailed history, like telling of what white people in this country did to black and brown bodies, but specifically black bodies, from the time that they were first forced to be brought here to today. It is not terribly long. It is a little dense in terms of like the chapters are long, so I found that like pacing yourself was kind of necessary, um, but the information is just so potent and vital to understanding why the world looks the way it looks today from like really any point of view. I think it exploded because it is such a good resource and it deserves every ounce of praise and respect that it has earned. So there we go. Those were 10 summer books or 10 books that recommended based on sort of like summary things. It is a book tag. So I guess I am tagging you. Um, I don't really like tagging people on tags, like specific people. I just, I don't know. I always feel like I'm going to tag somebody who doesn't want to, or like I'm going to miss somebody who did. So blanket invitation if you would like to do this tag i would love to hear what you have to say okay that is all i have for you guys today let me know uh what you think of my answers if you agree with me or you disagree with me i probably some opinions were controversial maybe who knows uh so let me know what you think and i will see you guys in the next one okay bye